Hello friends, in the previous lecture on Anton Chekhov's The Bear, we introduced Chekhov, his life and writings, the characters, we now will discuss The Bear in much more detail, we will pay attention to the characters of Popova, Smirnov and Luka, we will see the significance of the off stage character Nikolai Mihalovich, we will also understand the importance of Toby and then spend some time for the theme, form, language and literary aspects of the play, then discuss human relationships and reflections on life and consider some aspects which we can take away for our life and finally summarize the lecture. What are the objectives that we have to examine the characters in the bear, to analyze the thematic and formal aspects of the play, to explore the linguistic and literary features of the play, though it is a joke in one act, it has certain literary features, we will understand them. To understand the human relationships in the play, we have two major characters, a man and a woman falling in love with each other in spite of themselves, that is something very interesting for us. To reflect on the nature of life and consider the takeaways from the play, Anton Chekhov is one of the greatest playwrights or one of the greatest writers, he has so much to give to the world, it is for us to read his short stories, plays and understand what he has to tell us about humanity. We are already familiar with these characters, Elena Ivonovna Popova, she is a land owning little widow with dimples on her cheeks. Grigory Stepanovich Smirnov is a middle aged land owner. Luka is Popova's aged footman, footman is a servant. Nikolai Mihalovich is a dead husband of Popova and Toby is a horse actually and it also has some importance, we will see the importance of Toby in the play. Let us begin with Elena Ivonovna Popova. She is a landowner and the wife of the late Nikolai Mihalovich. She is a lady in mourning for 7 months, her husband has passed away and she is still in mourning. She does not visit the neighbours or receive guests at home, she is alone, she does not speak to anyone except her servant Luka. She lives like a nun in a convent, though she lives in her own house. She has buried herself between the four walls almost uh, she considered herself dead uh, like her husband. In spite of the fact that uh, her husband is dead, she wants to be faithful to her husband though her husband was unfaithful and uncaring during his life. She loves a horse Toby because this horse was a favorite horse of her husband Nikolai. She is confident of her self-righteousness, she tells very often I am a good and virtuous little wife, but her husband was not so, not virtuous, not a good husband. Men in general are not good for her, but she calls herself a good wife, a virtuous wife. Well, let us learn more about Papawa now. She is disturbed by the arrival of Smirnov who has come to collect the payment of 1200 rubles. She plainly tells Smirnov she cannot attend to money matters when she is in mourning and when her steward is away from her. She requests Smirnov not to shout and to behave well in the society of ladies because Smirnov wants to somehow get the money from her, he shouts at her. She accuses Smirnov of coarse and rude behavior when he insists on payment, that is the rude and coarse behavior of now is what is referred to in the title of the play, The Bear. He appears like a bear. She gets drawn into the battle of the sexes about who is constant in love, man or woman and both of them give their opinions but then both fall in love with each other. She is exposed by Smirnov about her makeup even in mourning. If you are mourning then what is the use of doing makeup for yourself? That is what Smirnov asks Popova. However, Popova insults Smirnov calling him a bear and a monster, but he is not worried about this kind of name calling, he simply proposes to her and embraces her. We learn a little more about Popova here, Popova accepts a challenge for a duel with guns, with guns, but she does not know how to shoot. She takes the gun from her house and asks Smirnov, teach me how to shoot and uh, she wants to shoot Smirnov, the teacher of gun for her. She asks Smirnov to teach her shooting and patiently learns from him. She invites him to the garden for a duel, she does not want to do it in the house, she wants to go out of the house. However, 
she attracts Mernav with her strong will to fight. The will to fight is attractive for Mernav. She decimates him with her powerful attitude. She also tells him to go away but accepts his embrace. She tells him go away but when he embraces her, she accepts it. Finally, she tells Luca not to give words to Toby thereby changing her affection from Nikolai to Smirnov. Initially, now and then, she tells Luca to give words for Toby. But then when her affection changes to uh, Smirnov, she tells Luca do not give more words to Toby. That is the kind of significance we will learn a little more about it. Now, who is this Grigory Stepanovich Smirnov? He is a middle aged landowner. He is a retired lieutenant of artillery. He meets Popova to collect the dues of 1200 rubles. He is called a regular devil by Luca, the servant of Popova. He swears and abuses people like Luca and Simon. He does not speak politely. He is very crude and rude in his attitude. He excels in mimicking Popova and adds to humor. Whatever Popova says, he repeats in the form of a mimicry. He is desperate for money to pay his interest on his bank loan. He met several defaulters before coming to this place, but he is unable to get any money from anyone including Popova. He is actually frustrated and so he is provocative, he provokes Popova. We will see something more about Smirnov now. He does not like women due to their feminine logic. This emotional aspects of women he does not like. He is outraged by Popova's insistent refusal to pay money. He has come here to collect money, but he does not get it, so he is outraged. However, he is determined to get money from Popova even if it means staying at her place for a couple of days. He is prepared to stay there till he gets his money back. He orders Luca about for water, vodka, he does not keep quiet. He always shouts at Luca. First, he asks Luca to bring water and then he asks Luca to bring vodka also. He becomes aware of his unprofessional clothing and appearance. When he interacts with uh, Popova, he understands. When she calls him a bear, monster and all that, he understands. He has come here in his unprofessional clothing and he does not have good appearance. He notices the dimples and powder on Popova's face and so he tells her. You are mourning, but you have powder on your face. He indulges in provoking Popova repeatedly by mimicking her words and also her voice. In one context, he says like this, and I told you perfectly plainly, I do not want the money the day after tomorrow, but today. So, the tone used by Popova is reflected in his reply to Popova. Let us see something more about Smirna here. He starts the topic of the constancy of men and women. He provokes Popova into the battle of the sexes. Although insulted by Popova, he invites her for a duel. He believes in equality of women in shooting also. So, he teaches her. He is willing to teach her shooting and also to forego 1200 rubles. He is floored by, decimated by Popova's daring attitude and so he confesses to liking her. So, he says, I am off my head. I am in love like a boy, like a fool snatches her hand, she screams with pain, I love you. He kneels in front of her, I love you as I have never loved before. He has already loved several women, but this woman is special. He withdraws from the duel and embraces her. He proposed a duel fight between the two and then he says, no, no, I will not fight with you and so he embraces her. Luca is an interesting character. He is an old man, he is an aged footman with Popova. He suggests to Popova to forget her husband dead husband and get on with life as he has done with his own old woman. He receives Smirnov and bears all his abuses. He tolerates everything shown by Smirnov. He describes Smirnov as a devil and an infliction. He brings water and vodka whenever he is asked to bring. He also uses the device of aside. He is there on the stage, another character is there, but he tells audience. The devil has come to stay, bad luck that brought him. He shares this idea with the audience. He feels helpless to remove Smirna from Papa's house. Papa tells Luca several times, send him away, remove him, let him go out. But uh, Luca is unable to help because he is old, whereas Smirna overpowers Luca. He communicates with the other servants 
to mobilize the force against Smyrna. When nothing works out, he calls all other uh, servants into the house so that they all can push Smyrna away. But then meanwhile, the battle of the success starts, the duel starts and uh, the play ends unexpectedly in the embrace of Smyrna and Popova. Nikolai Mihailovich is the dead husband of Popova. Toby was his favorite horse. Popova's love for husband is transferred to Toby by giving more oats. Now, Popova uh, can't show her love to Nikolai by any means other than loving Toby and giving more and more oats to Toby which was loved by Nikolai. Popova has a picture of her husband to prove her true love and she remembers him all the time. Though her husband is unjust, unfaithful, uncaring, he is loved by Popova. He controls the play significantly. The husband is dead, but then the whole play is controlled by the absent, the dead Nikolai. Only his picture is there when Popova appears. His debt of 1200 rubles brings Parnav to Popova. That is how the action takes place. Popova's love for husband is a point for her argument in the battle of the sexes. She uses her love for her husband as a means to support her belief that women are constant. Toby is a horse as we said earlier, it is a favorite horse of Nikolai. Toby loves votes. Uh, this Toby horse connects Mihailovich, Popova and Smirnov all three together. Mihailovich bought votes from Smirnov for the horses including Toby and that is how all these characters come together. Popova takes special care of Toby because Toby was loved by her husband. Every now and then Popova tells Luca to give more and more words to Toby. Now and then she would tell in her conversation. When she accepts Smirnov as a suitable person, she stops words for Toby. She tells uh, Luca, do not give him words. Uh, this is a kind of rhetorical figure we have in literature called metonymy. The love for one person is indicated through love for the horse. Toby was loved by Nikolai, Nikolai is loved by uh, Popova, so Popova loves Toby. This is a kind of metonymical relationship that we have in the case of Toby. Let us see the thematic contrast now. Appearance and reality are contrasted. What appears to be as a bear is not exactly a bear, it is a mouse. Life and death are contrasted. The dead husband and the living wife, they are contrasted. We have love and hatred which is expressed in both Smirnov and also Popova. Popova loved her husband, she hated him for his bad activities, but then we find that she loves him still. And then we have Smirnov who loved women, but then now he loves this lady. We have the thematic contrast of credit and debt. Popova owes some debt of 1200 rubles to this man Smirnov and so he has come here to collect the debt. We have poverty and affluence, rich people and poor people are contrasted. We also have forgetting and remembering, men forget women or women forget men and these ideas are contrasted. Remember the old man Luca, uh, he mourned the death of his old woman for a short time and then forgot her because he had to continue with his life. We also have the contrast between old and young people. Master and servant is also a thematic contrast we can see between Popova and Luca. Let us see the form now. It is a one act play. It is a very brief and concentrated play. As we have in the title, it is a joke. Obviously, it is a comic satire on the pretensions of ordinary people like Popova who pretends to mourn for the dead husband, but who in fact falls in love with Smirnov when he comes to meet her. These characters reveal the true selfish characteristics when the situation arises. We have of course comic exaggerations for the sake of comedy and satire. Chekhov has used brilliant imitative language and mimicry for heightened comic effect. Let us see the language. We have to remember that this play was originally written in Russian. It was translated into English by Julius West. The language that we have in the English version is simple in spoken form. We have the dramatic effect in Smirnov's repetitions and mimicry. There are lots of exclamations. Smirnov also says in an aside, her eyes, her eyes, what an inspiring woman. A man who has come to collect money, 
he is inspired by the woman's love, beauty and he starts loving her. Popovat says to Smarna, let's go out and fight. Smarna says goodbye but he does not go. Popova says, yes, yes, go away. She yells at him actually, where are you going? Stop, no, go away, stop, go. This is a kind of funny incident that we have at the end of the play. Oh, how angry I am. Don't come near me, don't come near me. When she says, don't come near me, Smirna goes near her and embraces her. Let us see some literary devices in the play now. Irony is a major device used in the play. We have a lady who is in mourning. She thaws into love the bear that she hates at the beginning. The creditor who has come to collect money he is willing to forego his money for the sake of love. We have the repetition of words and phrases. Particularly one example we have state of mind. I am in such a state of mind says Popova and Smirna repeats it and mimics it. As we mentioned earlier in the case of Toby the feature of metonymy we can find in the case of the favorite horse of Nikolai that is Toby and the love of Popova for Nikolai is transferred to Toby. So, she gives more and more of words to uh, the horse and when her love changes to Smirna she stops it. We have simile in the case of we live like spiders. Luca says this to Popova. We have another simile in I am tired as a dog Smirna says to Popova. And we also have a metaphor in the statement, she is the most commonplace crocodile. When he talks about a woman shedding tears, Smirna says this to Popova. Let us see the human relationships now. We have an ideal husband and an ideal wife. Affectionate and faithful relationships are introduced through this. But the ideal husband is not exactly ideal. Popova knows it. The actual life is full of contradictions. She says all those uh, unhappy feelings that she has and she shares them with Smirna. She is a lady in mourning for 7 months who is prepared to go to a nunnery, does not forget to powder her face. That is a kind of contradiction we can see here. She is also a lady who does not know how to handle a gun but learns how to shoot and loves another man. We have a man in Smirna who has not loved any woman for 5 years. Before that he loved several women. That is a different story. Here we have a man who has not loved women for 5 years and suddenly falls flat for Popova and yearns for the love of the ravishing woman. That means human beings are fickle minded, their minds can change at any time. So, what we have in human relationships is a facade, it is not exactly true. Luca puts it so well, his old woman is worth a month's grief, that is all just one month and then after that he continues with his life. Maybe when we look at all these things we can understand that life is like a show, it goes on. Let us see some reflections on life with a series of questions. What is marriage? What is family life? What are affections? How do people carry on with their life when they lose their loved ones like Popova? How does a middle aged landowner behave on meeting a young and attractive widow? How do people remember their lost relations? How do people change their affections when they find new sources of love? New avenues always appear. How far is sensible to be melodramatic about ideals of faith? We can be idealistic, we can be faithful, but then practical life compels us to change our ideals. What are the takeaways from this play? Do not go to extremes in both love and hatred. Extremes are not good moderations are good for us. Keep moving with the current of life. Appearance is not reality. Smirna of the bear is not a monster, he is a mouse. The bear is a mouse at heart. Beware of people saying one thing and doing another. This is what we always find in our life. Situations will bring sense to us. Mourning for a dead husband for over 7 months is not sensible, but she is brought to senses by Smirna. There is no need for getting into arguments. Do not get into arguments is something that we can learn from this play. Arguments will expose our weaknesses soon. Why should not we get into arguments? Because we will expose ourselves. If you fight with the forces of life, you will meet with defeat. The forces of life like emotions, particularly strong emotions like love and hatred, we will be defeated by those emotions. What we can do at best is enjoy life as it comes. 
to summarize our analysis of Anton Chekhov's The Bear, we have seen the characters of Popova, Smirnov and Luka in detail. We saw the significance of the offstage character Nikolai Mihailovich. We also understood the importance of Toby the horse. We mentioned the term metonymy in this context. We saw the theme of love and hatred. We saw the theme of appearance and reality. We looked at the form, the joke, the word of will. We understood the language to be simple in translation of course. We found certain literary devices like simile, metaphor, irony, repetition and all those. We understood the human relationships between especially between Mirnav and Popova. We also noticed similar relationship between Luca and his own wife. When we came to reflections on life, he asked more questions. What is marriage? What is life? What is love? These are subject to changes. That is what we understand from this play, particularly Chekhov's play The Bear. We saw certain takeaways. Enjoy life as it comes. Here are some more references for you. Please go to these references to understand more about Anton Chekhov and his play The Bear. You will appreciate it much more. If possible, read other one act plays or even full length plays of Anton Chekhov and learn more about life, love, hatred, appearance, reality and everything else. All the best. Mm -hmm.